Well, we're, we're so excited for our 20th anniversary to have Suzanne Summers come back. Suzanne is one of America's most popular and beloved personalities in such a multifaceted career, which has spanned more than three decades. She has achieved extraordinary success as an actress, a singer, comedian, and a New York Times bestselling author, as well as Las Vegas Entertainer of the Year and an entrepreneur and lecturer as she is serving today. She has been the voice and face of alternative medicine. Her latest book, Bombshell, Explosive Medical Secrets, that will redefine aging, just released this month, was an immediate New York Times bestseller. Suzanne's fun talk show, and very interesting one, on Suzanne's breakthrough, and she really is a true leader and innovator in so many areas, not only in the media, in Hollywood, and in the areas of preventative medicine. Her new talk show, The Suzanne Show, will premiere this fall. And in this, she will go in-depth into alternative medicine and information on health and fitness in a very casual setting. So she really crosses the board of so many different areas of medicine and health and fitness, along with being a long-term Hollywood star. She happened to be, I don't know, I'll take you back now to American Graffiti, that 1973 classic by George Lucas, one of the first movies he did. She was in American Graffiti. She was the beautiful blonde in that white T-bird that we all used to dream about as kids. And then she went on to Chrissy in Three's Company, another show that achieved her worldwide acclaim. She was even a co-host of Candid Camera. And she was a recipient of the People's Choice Awards for the favorite actress in new television series several years running. So let's put our hands together for an icon of health and fitness and the voice and a true leader in anti-aging and preventative medicine and innovation, Suzanne Summers. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, a packed house. I like that. Uh, October 16th of this year, I woke up and I really had a big laugh because I realized I was 65. And I thought, what a different experience I am having from my vision of 65 when I was a kid. When I was a kid, 65 was ancient. And people either died or retired. And I realized I was so nowhere near that scenario. And then another thing happened to me this year. I went to the um, Vanity Fair Oscar party. And this beautiful girl came up to me. Beautiful. She looked like Scarlett Johansson. She's probably 21 years old. And absolutely flawless and perfect and she's real nervous she came up to me and I said D can I help you and she said well I just want to tell you that I hope when I'm your age I look like you huh <laughs> I, I, I looked at her in all her perfection and I thought how weird she wants what I have and then I thought I get it I, I, I actually like what I have better than what she has in all her perfectness and all her Scarlett johansson -y I, I I have what I always wanted, which is incredible health, incredible energy. Um, I like the way I look. I'm not battling weight. I, I sleep eight hours a night. I manage my stress. I've been taking care of myself all because of what I've learned from you. And so I want to thank you all first, before I begin, for being my teachers. And I realized um, a number of years ago, and you know, life is a journey you can't plan. I realized that uh, I have a louder voice that I could use for the better good rather than just getting good tables in restaurants, which is a very nice thing, by the way. I realized, because I was so passionate about what you were doing, that I could be the bridge between you and them out there and those out there are me we are human beings who realize there is something wrong there is something wrong with uh, the environment people are getting diseases and conditions way too young there is something wrong you know it but because of of Abraham Flexner who was sent at the turn of the century as probably most of you know this story to the institutes of 
higher learning by the two richest families in the country, the Carnegies and the Rockefellers, who own, hmm, pharmaceutical companies. And they sent Flexner to the Institutes of Higher Learning to offer funding in perpetuity to teach allopathic only. Here's my symptom, here's the drug. And so all of you who are in the other pathics, the homeopathics and the naturopathics and the chiropractics, all those other pathics were put on the side here and deemed quackery. And that's how this whole paradigm has started of, of the, the lay people thinking that the only true medicine is allopathic medicine. How has that worked out for them? My friends who are my age and older can't think. They don't do what I do because they've known me so long, they think, what do you know? We, by the time we reach middle age, we're given drugs for almost every condition. I remember in the three years where I hadn't discovered hormones, I went from doctor to doctor to doctor. And I was offered sleeping pills, I was offered Valium, I was offered anti-anxiety, I was offered um, cholesterol-lowering medicine, I was offered uh, blood pressure medicine. I, I, that was the beginning cocktail. I finally said to the last doctor I went to, I said, are you joking? Really? Is this the best you have to offer women? And he patted me on the back and he said, the drug companies know best, dear. So at that moment, I thought, you old fool. <clears throat> and I realized I'm on my own. I got to go find this for myself. So I went on a search. Best thing I ever did for myself. That's how I found you. I found, I heard about this gynecologist who lived up in Santa Barbara, a couple hours from where I live, and I had my blood work done, and on the day of my appointment, I drove up there like a maniac. I had to get to the bottom of it. I hadn't slept. Um, I, I, my personality had changed. I was gaining weight. I had that menopausal body that you look at yourself and you think, how did this happen? I'm not even eating, and I'm gaining weight. I'm not eating anything. You know, have you ever noticed if you go out with women, they eat salads? All they eat is salads. Um, they're eating something else at other times of the day, but when you go out with a woman, they're eating salads. <laughs> at night, they eat sofas. <laughs> so I walked into the, um, the uh, endocrinologist's office, and thank God her uh, front office was nice to me because I would have chewed their heads off. And I got in there, and she looks at my blood work, and she said, oh, you poor thing. I said, what? She said, oh, you have almost no e estrogen. I said, okay. Uh, she said, you must feel terrible. I said, I do. I feel terrible. She said, it's all going to be okay. Oh, my God, those words were just like music to my ears. What do you mean? I, she said, I'm going to start you on bioidentical hormones. I can't give you everything that you need right now because it took a long time to drain out, so it's going to take time. But we'll, in, in increments, we're going to increase your, your um, amounts until you reach your sweet spot. So... I started taking these hormones, and within two weeks, I started feeling so much better. It took me a year to find my sweet spot, and I have had a sweet spot now for uh, close to 20 years. Oh, my. That's why life is so great. I look at my friends who are st struggling, and um, a lot of them have a lot of money, and I think they are the um, victims of, of allopathic medicine because they can afford it. They can afford going to the best doctors. And what that really means is they can afford the best drugs. They are on so many drugs. They can't think. They take a drug to sleep. They take a drug to wake up. They take a drug to, for their bad breath. They take a, a drug for their nail funguses. They take a drug for their water bloating. They take a drug for their, their phlegm in their throat. They take a drug for their cholesterol. They take a drug for... What are we thinking? And that's what's happening. They aren't thinking.